We're entering a new era where producing code is cheap. Well, cheap in the sense of time that it's quicker to produce. However, that's not gonna magically make software any better. We're just gonna produce more of it. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. With AI, I think people are taking a leap that's fundamentally wrong. It's not about producing cheap code. I don't think that's ever been the bottleneck. The bottleneck has been context. If you watched enough of my videos, you probably know my slogan is context is king. And context is probably more important now than ever. It's not about what syntax or folder structure your source code looks like. It's the context of why it does what it does. Why did you write the code or the AI write the code given your instructions? What are we optimizing for? What constraints did we have? What are the invariants and the things that can never happen? Probably well, most importantly, what trade-offs did we intentionally accept? What decisions were made and why? AI can provide the implementation. It can write all the code, but it needs context. It needs to understand how to make the trade-offs. Giving the instructions I see online of write clean code or dry code is the most useless instructions for actually developing a good design. But I understand the rebuttal that people have saying, well, it doesn't even matter anymore about design because if AI can read the code and can write the code and therefore change the code, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what type of folder structure you have, organization, it doesn't matter at all about the design because AI can just handle it. But that's a trap because the pain has never been writing code. It's about making behavioral changes safely. I'll explain more, but first I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's an event native data platform that feeds real-time business critical data with historical context and fine-grained streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, check out the link in the description. So I stumble upon this post that I think is a little bit of an impulse. It says, the way the code looks should be irrelevant. What matters is the end result. I understand this on the surface, but I think it's a little naive. When people think about the, how the code looks, sure, they might be thinking about, like again, structure, syntax, etc. But to go beyond that, absolutely it matters the way it looks because oftentimes, as I replied here, is, hear me out, coupling still needs to be managed. It is arguably the thing that when we are writing software that we need to handle the most. If you want a long list system that can evolve and change, you need to manage coupling. If AI makes producing code cheap, guess what's also going to be cheap? Creating coupling, creating a rat's nest turd pile of coupling, or what people call a big ball of mud that's hard to change. But it's about managing coupling because without it, you have nothing. In my example that I was trying to think of in my reply, everybody can probably relate to this, is if you make a change to one part of your system and affect another part of the system unintentionally. Why does that happen? because of coupling. But you might be thinking, but AI, it knows everything. It does it, It's going to know all the coupling. True, but you already know all the coupling right now as well, and you still have this problem. So what's going to be different with AI? If you are using a statically typed language, let's say in a monolith, you can find usages, you can run different tools to know what your coupling is between different boundaries or how your system runs. You can already know this, and you equally end up with a turd pile that's very brittle and very hard to change. So I don't think the answer is in the era of AI that we ignore design, it's likely the opposite. It's providing a design that's built on constraints in context. And where does that context live is where I'm gonna get into. It's the structure, it's the dependencies, it's the boundaries, which are arguably still more important than ever in coupling. All these foundational th things that you're doing now manually with AI are still very relevant. So how do you capture the design and the context in your system. The first is being very explicit in the domain and the language that you're using. It's still, I preach this so much, it's the opposite of CRUD and the language now is more important than ever. It's using the context to understand what the domain is. So it's not CRUD, it's very explicit about, my example here about say logistics and shipping, what actually the use cases, what are things that you can do a part of workflow. You can dispatch an order. You can have when a vehicle arrives at the shipper to pick up the freight, you're arriving there. When you're picking up the freight, that's the load. If you leave and now you're en route to the delivery, that's the depart. When you unload the freight or deliver the freight, that's the empty. And there's various things I'm just using here as an example, like a dry run. 
These are very explicit, which is the exact opposite of crud because it provides no context. All the context is living in your end users' heads because that's the workflow of what they're doing to interact with your system. So if you have a create shipment, update shipment, update stop, what is this? What does the system even do? You wouldn't be able to tell me what the actual workflow of anything because the workflow is in somebody's head just recording current state. By the way, if you want everything in written form, I have a companion blog post, links in the description. It's everything that's in this video, which gets me to state. And if we're talking about current state and how you're recording state, it's telling you how the system is now, but it gives you no context about how it got to the way it is. Again, about giving more context. And that is easily applied with events. There is a very big difference when we're talking about CRUD in a shipment created or a shipment updated, what does that even mean? Versus what I was talking about before of being explicit about our actions and our commands is that an order was dispatched. It arrived, loaded, departed, delivered. These are very explicit about the behaviors of our system versus what is this? I do, like this provides no context. One of the most underrated places context lives is in language in the code. It's providing context about what the system actually does and how it does it. So things like when you're using like commands and events, it's really the story of the domain. And because not all language is created equal and you can be using terms, especially in a large system that means different things, that's per boundaries. So you're using boundaries as a way to preserve a particular context and control the coupling between them. That language in that context is encoding the intent of what that boundary does. And things like events, they preserve the intent by capturing what happened and why. And when I'm talking about boundaries, which I do a lot on this channel, so if you're confused by it, just watch a pile of all these other videos, is that they contain that context. So you may have different boundaries that do different things, like sales does, again, in the context of the logistics and shipping, rating orders, ordering, the visibility to customers about the status of their order, and then kind of the execution, the operational aspect of dispatch, where you're tracking the vehicle and its path basically through executing and delivering, the auditing phase, the communications with the customer, billing, the approval, make sure all the documents, bill of ladings, everything's in place so you can actually bill your customer uh, and do your invoicing and pay your carriers and drivers and whoever's executing the shipment. They all have their own unique context. And here's a really great example about being explicit and identifying concepts and things like boundaries. Is a system coupled everything so tightly to Stripe that it was taking a miniature Manhattan project to move off of it. Using Stripe uh, only as a credit card processor is fine, but doing things like conflating Stripe payments with invoices, they're two different things entirely. Payments, money was sent in invoices, amounts owed for services and taxes, et cetera, exactly. They're fundamentally separate concerns. They're different concepts. Design has always been important, but I'm hoping now at least people realize the value in optimizing and capturing the context within your design, which you've been always able to do. Just I think maybe now people might see more of the value in it. Creating boundaries that have specific context and using the domain language explicitly about what that boundary does, the concepts, the actions, the events, the reasons why things happen the way that they happen. Understanding, I guess, that CRUD only gets you so far because when you're using CRUD, workflow and all those concepts are in end users' heads. They're not actually in the code in your system, which you, if you're using AI to then generate, it doesn't have any of that context. And of course, as always, manage coupling, managing coupling between these different boundaries, how they communicate. That still is more important than ever. Just because we have AI producing code cheaply in terms of how quickly you can do it, again, you can just still build a turd pile, a big ball of mud, just quicker now if you're not managing the coupling. So in this new era with AI, what do you think? Get in the comments is my favorite part. I want to really know what you think about the future is of design and software architecture. Do you feel like I do that it's more like fundamentals are more important than ever and hopefully it brings to light understanding context and providing it to AI? Or do you feel like it's still completely irrelevant because it doesn't matter anymore? If you enjoy topics like this and you want to chat with other software developers about software architecture and design, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. The link's in the description on how to join. And I appreciate everybody. Thank you for everybody that's already a member. Again, really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.